If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the nation, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. For those who claim to be committed to the cause of Christ, acknowledgement of Christ's authority is to be accomplished and accompanied by absolute obedience to his commandments. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? The word Lord is not to be taken lightly, glibly, conventionally, meaninglessly. It is to be taken upon our lips with godly fear. We can see what Jesus meant when he said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Everyone is mastered by someone or something. Christ alone deserves first place. We need a strength stronger than ourselves. We need a strength strong enough to help us to stand the stresses and the strains of our struggles. The only rightful Lord of our lives is Jesus Christ. In order for him to be the Prince of Peace, a coronation service has to be had. You will have to crown him King in your own heart. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In his letter to the Philippians, Paul penned the arrested announcement that God has given Christ a name which is above every name. And he envisioned the time when every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. In his letter to the Colossians, Paul declared that Jesus has been and has the unqualified supremacy. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. He is the head of the church. He is the firstborn from the dead. In all things, he has the preeminence. He precedes all others in priority. He exceeds all others in his superiority. He succeeds all others in his finality. He's the master of the mighty. He's the captain of the conquerors. He's the head of the heroes. He's the leader of the legislators. He's the overseer of the overcomers. He's the governor of the governor. He's the prince of princes. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. In his letter to the Romans, Paul declared that we all belong to Christ and are responsible ultimately to him for everything that we do. We live unto the Lord. If we die, we die unto the Lord. Yea, the great end for which Christ died and lived again was that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. Jesus Christ is Lord. The word Lord means having power or authority. The Great Commission is based on the claim of our Savior's Lordship. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all way, even unto the end of the world. Lord means ownership. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. He is owner. Men don't want to 
recognize the fact that God is the owner, even though he did not have to put his signature in the sunset, he's still owner. Even though he did not stamp a laundry mark on the meadow, he is still the owner. Even though he did not have to carve his initials in the side of the mountain, he's owner. He did not have to put a brand on the cattle of a thousand hills, but he's the owner. He did not have to take out a copyright on the songs that he gives the birds to sing, but he's the owner. His lordship is based on his ownership. Beyond the human level, the word Lord stands for a reverent allusion to God. The orthodox Hebrew in Jesus' day, as in our own day, would not pronounce the name of God, Jehovah or Yahweh. Instead, when he read the sacred and incommunicable name of God, he would say, the Lord, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Christians have applied this title to Christ in the latter usage. On either the human or divine level, the title Lord is a mark of respect and is implied pledge of obedience. Once Simon Peter stood before a hostile crowd and said, God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Christ represents the thing which God hath done to redeem us. Lord represents that we ought to do because we are redeemed. We ought to call him master and be his obedient servants. We ought to call him owner because he possesses absolutely our lives. In him we live and move and have our being. We ought to call him father and be obedient sons and daughters. He is our only hope. He is our only help. God is our refuge and our strength. He's a very present help in trouble. Therefore shall not we fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh walls to cease unto the ends of the earth. Breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Jesus is Lord. He came down the stairway of heaven. Born in Bethlehem. Brought up in Nazareth. Baptized in Jordan. Tempted in the wilderness. Performed miracles by the roadside. Healed multitudes without medicine and made no charges for his service. He conquered everything that came up against him. He even went up on Calvary and died there and then went down in the grave. And there cleaned out the grave and made it a pleasant place to wait for the resurrection. Then on scheduled time, by the might of his own power, he got up with every form of power in the orbit of his omnipotence. Men have been trying to wrestle his power from him all these years. And then, then they are trying to wait. They think that maybe one time his power will fail. Men have tried to destroy him. But don't you know you can't destroy him? What you gonna use for power? All power belongs to him. Well, if you try to destroy him by fire, 
he'll refuse to burn. If you try to destroy him by water, he'll walk on the water. If you try to destroy him by a strong wind, the tempest will lick his hand and lay down at his feet. If you try to destroy him with a law, you'll find no fault in him. If you try to destroy him with the seal of an empire, he'll break it. If you try to destroy him by putting him in a grave, he'll rise. If you try to destroy him by rejection or ignoring him, before you know it, you'll hear a still small voice saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Man, open the door, I'll come in and sup with him. He's Lord. Yes, he is. He's Lord. He's the pearl from paradise. He's the gem from the glory land. He's the true fairest of the jewel. He's time's choicest theme. He's life's strongest cord. He's light's clearest ray. He's purity's whitest peak. He's glory's stateless summit. He's Lord. His name stands as a synonym for free healing, friendly help, and full salvation. He bless. His blessed name is like honey to the taste. It's like harmony to the ear. It's like health to the soul. It's like hope to the heart. I'm trying to tell you, he's Lord. Yes, he is. He is higher than the heaven of heaven. And he's holier than the holy of holies. He's Lord in his birth is our significance. In his life is our example. In his cross is our redemption. In his resurrection is our hope. He's Lord. In his, at his birth, men came from the east. At his death, men came from the west. And the east and the west met in him. He's Lord. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. The Lord and the Lord God omnipotent reigneth, and He, yes, He will. He's going to reign, and you don't have to worry. For there will come a time when every knee is going to bow, not only at the name but to the name, and every knee is going to bow in the name. Whoa, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. I confess that he's my Lord. I love to call him my Lord. The Lord is love. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want for rest, for he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. I shall not want for refreshment, for he leadeth me beside still waters. I shall not want for forgiveness, for he restoreth my soul. I shall not want for companionship, for yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. I shall not want for comfort, for thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I shall not want for sustenance, for he, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I shall not want for joy, for thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. I shall not want for anything in this life, for goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall not want for anything in the life to come, for I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Is he yours? You can crown him king in your own heart right now. You can crown him Lord of all in your heart right now. Jesus Christ is Lord. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. 
He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.